back at Rock Gap. It's uh, about 12 o'clock on a Wednesday. About 45 degrees. And I will be hiking the whole uh, Standing Indian Loop. And then some. All goes well. Quite a switch from last week. It was uh, May, uh, low 70s in the daytime and uh, now we're in the mid 40s It's getting clear as the season moves on mm. Already so much more sun exposure. Been hiking for about two hours, 20 minutes. Getting closer to 5,000 feet. And stopped at this little uh, campsite here. Check it out. Some big limbs came down. Could have really messed someone up. Yeah, there's a fire ring. There's a limb. That's a big one, man. Yeah. Mmm, that's a big one. See, comparison here, yeah. I guess the guy camping over there would have been all right. So that trail leads, that's the AT, it leads up to Albert Mountain. But I'm gonna hit the bypass trail. Because I've seen it plenty of times. Got yeah, my sights on uh, Mooney Gap ASAP. A couple weeks ago we hiked through here and this was dry. Or several weeks rather, before the hurricane. So that's good to know. Look at all that fresh mountain mint. It smells so sugary. Ooh. You can see how much the canopy has opened up the past few weeks. and I made it to this uh, campsite with a view that we visited a few weeks ago and I think this is where I'm gonna have Christy meet me on Saturday she fills up for it and we can do a, have ourselves a little car camp I packed a duffel bag full of uh, cured firewood for her with some uh, fat wood and an axe hatchet so we could uh, yeah have her bring all of her bed pillows up here and we could have a nice nice little car camp maybe do a day hike to Albert Mountain and uh, we'll stay overnight for sure if she comes up there we'll see how she feels can't believe a Jorah made it up this far I think that's where my friend David the Gnome lives. <laughs> I loved that show as a kid. He was born in 86. I forgot what years that was on. Gosh, I love that show. Anybody remember that one? Any older fellers? Yeah, have kids that had to watch that when they were younger. David the Gnome, I love that show. It's cartoon. Yeah, it goes in there. They're good little uh, nooks and crannies for all kinds of critters in there. Well, 
Well, she's gushing this time. That's what uh, me and Christy were hoping for on the last hike. We would have gotten water here and camped it uh, on Pickens Knife. It's only four o'clock. If it were a bit later, I'd probably get water here and camp out somewhere nearby. But since it's so early, I'm, I think I'll head down to Betty Creek. That'll put me a little bit lower and a little bit further ahead in the, on the loop for tomorrow. Oh man, I've been in the shade too long. Blessed be the light. See, if I'd have uh, stayed on the road, I could have had a bit more sunlight. Made it to the Betty Creek campsite, Betty Creek Gap. Uh, yeah, I got here about half an hour ago. Had a little snack and uh, set up my hammock. There's a bear vault right there. So that should be easy access for me later this evening. Since I'm not packing a canister. I knew it was here uh, last time I was here, so kind of planned on using it. Letting my bag loft, letting the hammock, ham jam. Hmm. Well, who knows? Wind might die down later. May have a still night. Took my watch off so I could get accurate reading on the temp. See what it's saying now. Forty-seven. All right. Yeah, it's a bit nipply out, I would say. Turf is up. Man, I've really been dancing with this rhododendron in here. Doing a little ditty dance. Trying to get my uh, eye line staked out. One good thing about camping in a thicket is you always have plenty of uh, convenient tie-outs for side pull-outs. Gave these an extra uh, layer of seam seal on the inside. And I had a few drops coming through last time. But it's not going to rain anyway, but should be good for when it does. This is really the first time I used to tarp in ages, uh, just for the wind, really. See how it how it does. Kind of a cozy little nook in there, don't you say? If I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. Got the doors, yeah, man. Should be nice. Thank you, Warbonnet. Just got a little uh, shoelace knot, prussic knot. Brought along a little uh, old remnants of some Arbor Vita essential oil. Ooh, man, that'll make your eyes roll into the back of your head. Wow. Yeah, is that a? There's a group of uh, about a dozen trail workers blew past me earlier when I was just getting to camp. I overheard them saying, "Leave it, leave it in there for some trail magic." I thought, oh, well, I'll have a peek and see what they left in there. Looks like a brand new bear vault. Still has the tag inside. Bear vault. Hey, it sounds like my, uh, yikes, it sounds like one and a half ounces of fuel is more than enough to boil uh, 18 ounces of water. Things are rocking and rolling. The silent boil. I love it. I love it. Silent. Silent boil. So here's my coffee technique. Pretty much what I've been doing since I've been a teenager. Boil the water. Mix in your grounds. The finer the better usually, but not always so. 
and let her sit five or ten minutes and it'll it'll still stay plenty hot you know ten minutes later I'll be drinking it the only downside is it gets stronger as it sits but it is a damn good cup of coffee this was my uh, late dad's hat passed about three years ago yeah he had me order him this from uh, Varustaleka brand of Sarma they've got all kinds of stuff that's made in like uh, Finland, Switzerland Real thick, 100% wool. Keeps my noggin warm. Don't tell me to not drink any coffee lattes. I can drink as many coffee lattes as I want. And I don't want to see any dirty looks when I come in here. I've been drinking coffee lattes since fifth grade and I haven't looked back. <laughs> Little Seinfeld reference for you there. Oh, look at that. Perfection. <sighs> Not a ground in sight. Ah, found me a little uh, dark chocolate peanut butter with ooh quinoa crisp. How about that? Mm. Ooh. I, uh, since I've hiked this section so many times, I always carry the entire map. Really, it's just this tiny section that I actually ever use. So I just cut it out of the, uh, cut it off the main map, and uh, yeah, gosh, you wouldn't believe how heavy these uh, laminated maps are. Hmm. Save a lot of weight just cutting out the two sheets that I needed. Well, the wind died down nicely. Quite still now. Just just that fact alone makes it much warmer. Hmm. I think I may uh, cook a little dinner now. Just finished uh, boiling a bit more water. Really getting the alcohol to water ratio dialed in. That was a perfect boil there. Yeah, ooh, check out, look at that temp. 38 degrees. I'll take a still 38 degrees versus a windy 58 any day of the week. There's the moon. Hmm, slept pretty warm once uh, my quilt's warmed up. It's about 6.30. And it is 31 degrees. Actually, that said 30 before I started touching it. Oh, well, I woke up at about 6.30. Uh, it's so dark and cold. I'm no reason to get up in the dark. Hell, I'm in no hurry. So I'm back in bed for about another hour. Let's see what the temp got down to. 28. Ooh, it's chilly. That's a mite chilly. Fixing to break down the tarp. Retrieved my uh, food bag from the vault over there. Working on a little cafe. So quiet. Tough to beat a hard-boiled egg in the backcountry. Mmm. Mmm, yeah. These things would keep all week in this weather. Mmm. Should have brought more of them. It's about nine o'clock. I took my time packing up. And we are heading up the mountain. Across some good blowdown damage. 
lot of it up this way. That's Pickens nose over there, yet to be explored. This is one of my favorite sections on the loop. It's a uh, little Ridgepole Mountain and Ridgepole Mountain. That's where I'll be in about half an hour. Trail goes up yonder way. Cool lookout point right here. Wow, it is warm in the sun. The sun feels nice. Mountainside is singing. Okay, there's Ridgepole Mountain. Makes kind of a little dip, and then little Ridgepole Mountains over there. Can't yeah, that blowdown took the trail with it. I may have to join that uh, Nanahala Trail Club. Put in some work, earn my keep. It's too easy hike. Anybody can hike a trail. Yeah, the real, uh, yeah, the real respect and admiration goes to the uh, trail crews, clubs that keep this trail clear. Here are those bare trees that I was pointing to, and I said it would be about a half hour before I reached them. I can hear the water running off the rock face below. But now, you, yeah, you can get a better view of the. Little ridge pole, ridge line there. And there's the three, uh, three peaks. I can see Albert Mountain Fire Tower with my naked eye in the center. And the one to its left is Yellow Ball. I forgot the name of the one on the right, but that's where Mooney Gap is. I think Mooney, yeah. I've been up here in about three years, to be honest. So. Well, yeah, it's just like I remember. You can really hear the water. Steep hillsides. There's the Carter's Gap shelter. Piece of a tripod. Bear alert. Some dirty someone left there. Dirty socks hanging up there. Smiles, not miles. Nice view down south. There's a real mouth. Canyon mouth right there. Whew. Gets real windy here. It's so still right now. Mm, man, I'd love to stretch out and just lay in the sun all day. But standing Indian awaits. It's interesting how they change the verbiage on here, I noticed. For years it's been uh, North Carolina Wildlife Bear Sanctuary. I was reading online and I heard they opened up since, I mean, they closed bear hunting in the 70s because there was like, what, 3,000, like less than 3,000 bear left, black bear. Then they opened up hunting just 
this year, I believe, because they worked their numbers up to uh, 50,000 or 60,000 black bear from 3,000, like 50 years ago. So now it's a management area. Double whammy there. Big old blowdown. I made it to Beach Gap that last hour I was slowed down to about a half mile an hour crawl felt great first three hours of hiking today then my left tendon started feeling very inflamed painful my right uh, right foot feels completely fine feels great on there but I know exactly what happened self-inflicted wound due to operator error. I tied my left boot too tight yesterday. I remember doing it too. I loosened my my right uh, ankle has a lot of uh, what do you call it? Overpronation. Extra movement. It's real floppy. So I always tie this one looser. And I really should have done it to the left one too. I remember tightening my left shoe a bit looser to keep my uh, toes from jamming into the front of the boots. Yeah, I hadn't worn these in a few years. I did that on my Colorado through hike. Yeah, it all it was it was painful for a day, but it got better. I promised myself I'd never make that mistake again. Dang, that tendon. Yeah, it was just too tight, so it was just rubbing it, irritating it. So I probably won't be making it up to Standing Indian tonight. Figured it'd be better to stop early this afternoon. It's 2.30 already. I should have been at Standing Indian like, in like an hour. I should be halfway up it already. So I'll see if I have enough water. I filled up my water. Most of my water, about three and a half liters or so. Three liters. Not too long ago. I mean, that could get me through the night. It'd be nice to get some more, but I think this beach gap's dry, I believe. If I rest a while, maybe I can hike a little bit for some water. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Better safe than sorry. No reason to keep hiking. Cause further injury. So, that's the change of plans there. Well, sir, I have made the call to continue up towards Standing Indian. I took a couple of Advil for my tendon. And if I don't articulate my ankle, I just keep it, you know, without articulating too much. It's just a very mild, dull pain. I'm at 4,500 feet, only a thousand feet to go. I'll be going across that little saddle in there. And I think that's Standing Indian, but the peak of it is a little further, further back behind what you can see. Check out my little automatic fill station. Yep, tip it over.
That's the biggest street ball I've ever seen. Just about took the whole mountain with it. Yeah, it's easy, it's hard to tell from up here. That's easily four to six times the size of any root ball I've seen. So I just came around the bend and here's the start of that saddle that I was showing you from around the corner and below. Should be a real nice gentle grade up to the standing Indian now. Yeah, my right foot, right ankle, it feels it's 110%. My whole body's 110% except for that. Just nursing that left ankle, front tendon. Hmm. Be honest this is probably just that short part of the saddle that you can see from below and see a high point there and kind of the in there. yeah that indeed was the saddle you can see it perfectly right there on that profile towards the top right takes a dip now I'm going back up won't be long now Thing exploded. I endeavored to persevere. Took about an hour longer than it should have. But I endeavored to persevere. This is a cool campsite. Looks like someone built up the firing in recent years. Yeah, it's been a few before I've been up here. Man, I need to come up here with a broom and clean house. Yeah, good hanging trees at this site are sparse. There to there would be more ideal, but it's too much of a stretch. I can't reach high enough to have to be on the ground. This will have to do. Ah, that's what I was waiting for. Ah. Ready to throw in the towel at 3 p.m. What is it? 6:40. Oof. Not a bad view. At this elevation, every tree up here is a widow maker itself. From the trunk up, the trees are so uh, weak and just weak. The grass is so shoddy up here. Can't trust any of them. picking up and I am situated right on the precipice the mouth of the canyon all the winds coming up gonna be rolling right into me all night I'm ready to embrace it now Franklin's calling for uh, 28 degrees 
Actually, it was like 34 last night. It ended up being 28. For about 6 degrees cooler. So I can expect low 20s or high teens tonight. Plus the wind chill. Things could get dicey. That wind. I mean, if it was still, if the air were still, it'd be a whole different story. That wind's gonna cut it down to fucking zero degrees, man. I may hike back over to the other area. There's the moon coming up. Yeah, as lovely as the spot that would have been. That wind just would have been the death of me. Yeah, constant high winds, whole different ball game in this kind of cold. Uh, I'm not really carrying Arctic gear. Yeah, I say fudge that. I'll live to hike another day. So there's Venus. It's supposed to be like just to the right and a little bit lower. Hmm, don't see it. Well, you can't say I didn't try. I've been scanning and scanning for 15 minutes. I don't know what's going on with this thing. For some reason, I'm just not meant to see it. Wow. I've been looking in my backyard the past week for it. Came all the way up here to get a better look. Still no luck. Hmm, oh well. Ah, uh, yeah, dehydrated bean flakes. That'll cure what ills ya. Got them locally from the uh, Harmony House in Franklin, North Carolina. Kind of tapering off there. Oh yeah, let that sit a few minutes. Cover it and let it sit. Oh, it's gonna be nice and saucy. Juicy. Ah, it's midnight, and the wind is howling, the moon is bright, and I am cozy as heck. I learned the trick to getting this underquilt tight is to stretch it. You know that feeling like when your whoopee sling's getting so tight that you can't even adjust it anymore because it's so taut? That's, I apply that same principle purposefully to my uh, secondary suspension on my underquilt. I just rip that thing as tight as it'll go until it feels like, yeah, you're just stressing it out. Like you're going to rip it out. It's so tight. And then I get in zero cold spots for the first time ever. Ah, uh, so warm. All up and down my back. I was fighting cold pockets all night last night, man. I was shivering last night in this 10 degree bag. Oh, now it's way colder, way windier. And no effect, dude. I am warm as heck in this thing now. Finally, finally figured out how to get this thing tight enough to be warm. 
just gotta rip those cords out of their sockets. Mmm. Oh gosh, I can't tell you how satisfied I am that I, I don't have a cold butt anymore. It's like fourth time using an undercoat. First time not having a cold butt. Mmm. Feels good. I am really, really warm and comfortable. I could sleep. Oh, 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 man, woke up once at midnight and once at five. Dang, now it's eight. Wow, I slept like a baby. Usually I'm waking up every half hour with cold spots. Yeah, got this uh, underquilt wound up tighter than a tick. But it, that's what I need to have no cold spots. Worked out good. Hmm. Pitched my tarp to the ground. It was windy for about half of the night. But the first few hours of the night were really windy. But, uh, yeah, that moonlight was bright. Yeah, one thing I don't like about a tarp is you can't see the sky. I wanted to get up at daybreak and go see the moon setting over the standing Indian peak. I mean, from the peak. But, uh, ah, uh, it's too cozy, it's too cold. But it only got down to 42 in here. Which is pretty surprising. Or maybe the forecast was, uh, wasn't correct. I don't know how it could be 25 outside and 45 in here. I guess that's possible. I'll have to bring a, uh, a second little uh, temp gauge to put outside of my sleeping quarters. That way I can get an accurate reading from yeah what the ambient temperature is and the my sleeping nook temperature would be. warm in there. That bushwhack camo is so nice. I love the way that blends in. Oh, it's strange. It feels like it's 40 degrees. I guess, uh, I guess the weather man ain't always right. Oh, the weather man. The weatherman come and the weatherman go, where the man go, where the wind blow. My dad used to say that. I was like five years old. I don't know where he heard it. <laughs> Actually, he used to carry a leatherman tool, and he'd call it his weatherman. Leatherman, weatherman. A weatherman. The weatherman come and the weatherman go, where the man go, where the wind blow. Oh, the way to man. <laughs> oh, I do have a big smile on his face. Laugh about it. Yeah, that guy was crazy. He was a one of a kind character. Feel him up here with me now. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you, Dad. Love you, Dad. 
Yeah, I'm camped down on the hillside down there. Yeah, there's several really nice campsites. I mean, you could fit probably a dozen. These 16 tents all scattered through there. There's even more further down. There's plenty, no shortage of camping up here. And then there's the one grassy knoll at the top. And then a couple of decent spots as you go further back. If anyone's ever looking to come up here, there's plenty of hanging spots uh, down behind me. But uh, you probably need a tent. Well, you could hang up here. There's a few, few areas to hang up here. Oh man, oh, the tendon's still getting me. Pretty low on water, so I'm gonna head down to Stan Andy and shelter soon. If I had a ton of water, I'd, shit, I'd stay up here half the day. Oh, that tendon. Oh, there's the man. Yeah, it's still hanging. Waking up to a scene like that, that's enough to move you. There's a little bit of frost on the ground. I'm glad I didn't camp up here. Yeah, that campsite that I was the first campsite that I stopped at last night down at the end gives you some really, really nice views southward. And yeah, you can see Curry Mountain clearly. That's like 25, 30 miles away. So before I left camp, I was texting with Christy and decided to meet at the top of Kimsey Creek, also known as Deep Gap Trailhead. Switchbacks.